In this video, we're going to take a look at the Euclidean algorithm as a method for finding the greatest common divisor. Before we go through the actual mathematical definition of the Euclidean algorithm, I'm actually going to just do an example with you first because I think it makes the algorithm easier to understand. So I'm trying to find the greatest common divisor of 544 and 212. And when I do this, I'm going to start with the value that is greatest. And I'm going to say 544 is equal to 212. So I'm using those two numbers. 544 is equal to 212 times something plus something. So this process should look familiar to you because we've done it before. So if I were doing this, I would find that 212 times 2 with a remainder of 120 is the same as 544. So now let's continue this process. What this tells me is that the GCD of 544 and 212 is the same as the GCD of 212 and 120. 212 and 120. And notice the 212 just carried over. So now we're going to start with 212 and say 212 is equal to 120 times some number plus some number. And in this case, 212 would be equal to 120 times 1 plus 92, which means this GCD is the same as the GCD of 120 and 92. So now let's find the GCD of 120 and 92. 120 equals 92 times 1 plus 28. So now I'm trying to find the GCD of 92 and 28. So I say 92 is equal to 28 times 3 plus 8. So now I'm trying to find the GCD of 28 and 8. Then I'm going to say 28 is equal to 8 times 3 plus 4. So now I want the GCD of 8 and 4. Now 8 is equal to 4 times 2 plus 0. So once I get to a remainder of 0, that's when I'm done. So don't get confused. The other time that we did this when I said your quotient had to be 0, once I get to a remainder of 0, then I know that I'm done. Now what is the GCD? The GCD is the last remainder, which is whatever number you're carrying down, whatever the last quotient would be. So in this case, then the GCD would be 4. So this GCD is 4 because it's the same as the GCD of all of the other representations that I had. That is how we use the Euclidean algorithm. So now let's take a look at the actual algorithm or what the algorithm says. It says let A equal BQ plus R. Again, we're used to that format. We're saying it's some number times a quotient plus a remainder where A, B, Q, and R are all integers. Then the GCD, the greatest common divisor of A and B, is equal to the greatest common divisor of Q and R, which is, of course, the quotient and the remainder. So that is what the Euclidean algorithm says, and that's what we put into play just a few moments ago. But why does this work? So again, if I want to prove this, then I want to show that the common divisors of A and B are equal to the common divisors of Q and R, because if all of those common divisors are equal, then we know that the greatest common divisor of each is equal, because all of the divisors are equal. So then to go about proving it, I'm saying if D divides A and D divides B, so D is a divisor for both A and B, then D also divides the quantity of A minus QB. Now, I didn't provide a proof for that, but in section 4.1, we did go through that, you know, if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides A plus B. And I believe we also went through the proof where we said 
um, if D divides A and D divides B, then D divides A times B, and so it follows from there. So therefore, a common divisor of A and B is a common divisor of Q and R, because again, we're saying D goes into this, which means, and R is obviously A minus BQ. Um, so then we suppose, so this is sort of an if and only if statement, and remember if and only ifs, we have to go in each direction. So then we suppose that D, B, D divides B and D divides R, then we can say that D divides B, Q plus R, which means it divides A, which means it divides B. So therefore, any divisor of A and B is a common divisor of Q, R, and therefore the greatest of those divisors would also be equal. So just to make sure we understand again how that algorithm works, Let's try one more example together. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at whichever the higher or greater of the two values are, and I'm going to use the other value. So this is where the A and B and all of that came into before. We're saying 414 times what number times Q plus R. And so 414 times 1 plus 248 is equal to 662. And I'm going to continue that process. So now I'm saying 414 is equal to 248 times what, which is 1, plus what remainder. And then I'm going to continue with 248 equals 166 times 1, plus a remainder of 82. And then 166 is equal to 82 times 2 plus a remainder of 2. And then 82 equals 2 times 41 plus a remainder of 0. So my answer is the greatest remainder that is non-zero, which is 2. Up next, we're going to take a look at greatest common divisors as linear combinations.